Just before coming on the air tonight, we received word that a British hostage has apparently been murdered execution style by his ISIS captors in another videotape beheading. The video surfaced on the Internet late today showing what appears to be 44-year-old aid worker David Haynes reading a statement before being brutally killed. The tape has not been publicly authenticated by British or American authorities. It appeared on the Internet just a day after his family issued a public plea to his captors. NBC's Kristen Welker is monitoring this new development and joins us now from the White House with more. Kristen. Lester, NBC News has learned tonight of a videotape released by the official media wing of ISIS, purportedly showing the beheading of British hostage David Haynes. As you said, Haynes 44 has been held captive since 2013, when it is believed he was taken from the Turkish-Syrian border. The White House has not commented. This comes hours after his family released a statement appealing to his captors. The statement reads in part, we are the family of David Haynes. We have sent messages to you to which we have not received to reply. We are asking those holding David to make contact with us. ISIS is responsible for killing those two American journalists, James Foley and Stephen Sotloff. The Obama administration has embarked on what the White House spokesman is now calling a war against ISIS. The U.S. has launched about 160 airstrikes against ISIS targets in Iraq and it's expected Syria will be next. The terrorist group is headquartered in that country. The administration has been working to build an international coalition to defeat the group. Secretary Terry Kerry crisscrossing the Middle East to get Arab allies on board. And while 10 Arab nations have signed commitments to provide some military aid, it is unlikely they will commit their armies. President Obama continues to insist no U.S. boots on the ground. This latest incident could heighten the international outrage over this group. Lester. All right, Kristen, thanks for more on this breaking news. Let's turn to NBC's Richard Angle. He's on the ground in Iraq tonight. Richard, why would ISIS put out this awful video at a time when the U.S. is putting together a coalition to attack them? It almost seems like they're baiting the West here. Well, I think the ISIS group has two objectives in this. One, this is a warning to Arab nations, to neighboring countries, not to get involved, especially Turkey. Turkey has many of its diplomats who are being held hostage by ISIS, and it is a message to Turkey saying, if Turkey joins this coalition, this is going to happen to its diplomats. But there is also a message to the United States, to Great Britain, egging on a fight. Uh, ISIS believes that it can survive American airstrikes, that it, there is no real ground force uh, to push ISIS away. And it believes that if American ICE airstrikes come, the group will gain a tremendous amount of prestige. Remember, just a few months ago, this was a not very well-known group. It controlled some territory in Syria. Now it has become a popular terrorist franchise around the world, even eclipsing al-Qaeda. If you look online, a few years ago, all the want-to-be terrorist groups, all the aspiring groups associated themselves with al-Qaeda. Now all the franchises want to be just like ISIS. All right, Richard Engel on the ground for us in Iraq tonight. Thanks. And for more on how the administration plans to attack the threat of ISIS, let's bring in Chuck Todd, moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, I, I know it's early, but this, this murder of David right. Haynes, does it make the president's job easier in trying to form this coalition to go after ISIS? Well, it certainly, look, it was the American beheadings that galvanized the country uh, over the last 10 days and why the country is essentially backing uh, some sort of strikes against ISIS to take on ISIS. So as far as the political dynamics in Washington, um, they've already been there. The public's there. Congress is there. The question is, and that's the, you know, what, what Richard just brought up. So far, I Secretary Kerry has had a very hard time finding coalition uh, members that will actually contribute combat troops. You cannot defeat ISIS in Syria without combat troops. The U.S. does not want it to be theirs. And if you don't have Turkey, if you don't have Saudi Arabia, if you don't have Jordan committing to do those combat troops, then you're not going to succeed against ISIS. And I think that seems to be the big challenge for the administration, even as um, the threat of ISIS clearly uh, is now more and more public all the time.